a light bulb built in the early 1900s that's been burning for over a century. A bell at Oxford still ringing 180 years later. In this video, I'll show you inventions that have stood the test of time, defying the passage of decades and sometimes even centuries, proving that, well, they just don't build them like they used to. And we'll start things off with the Oxford Electric Bell, which is also known as the Clarendon Dry Pile. It was constructed in 1840 at the University of Oxford's Clarendon Laboratory. It was designed and built by a group of researchers led by Sir William Robert Grove, a Welsh scientist and a pioneer in the field of fuel cells. The mechanism behind it is relatively simple but quite ingenious. It consists of two brass bells placed in close proximity with a small metal clapper suspended between them. The clapper is attached to a metal rod that extends downwards into a glass jar filled with sulfuric acid. Now this jar contains a pair of dry piles, which are basically early versions of batteries. They're composed of alternating layers of zinc and copper separated by blotting paper soaked in salt water. When the dry piles are exposed to the acid solution, they generate a small electric current because of a chemical reaction between the metals and the electrolytes. This electric current flows through the circuit created by the bells and the clapper, causing the clapper to oscillate and strike the bells, producing a ringing sound. The entire apparatus is housed within a glass case to protect it from external disturbances. Remarkably, this bell, this Oxford electric bell, has been ringing almost continuously for over 180 years. Despite its age, the bell continues to function due to the incredibly low current required to maintain its operation. The dry piles used in the bell produce only a tiny amount of electricity, just enough to keep the clapper oscillating. And the design of the entire thing minimizes wear and tear on its components, allowing it to endure through the decades. Next up is the Beverly Clock, which is also known as the Zero Door Clock. It was constructed in 1864 and is located at the United States Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. The clock was built by the renowned clockmaker Edward Howard. What sets the Beverly clock apart is its unique method of operation. Unlike traditional clocks that rely on winding or on electronic mechanisms, the Beverly clock is powered solely by variations in atmospheric pressure and temperature differentials i.e. it operates on the principle that changes in air pressure and temperature cause expansion and contraction within its components driving its movement. The clock's mechanism consists of a pendulum attached to a torsion spring which in turn is connected to a gear train that regulates the clock's timekeeping. As the temperature and pressure fluctuate throughout the day, the expansion and contraction of the clock's components cause the pendulum to swing, keeping time with remarkable accuracy. Despite being over 150 years old, the Beverly clock continues to operate reliably and accurately. Its design, which puts aside traditional power sources in favor of natural environmental factors, has allowed it to endure through the years without the need for regular maintenance or intervention. Next up is the Centennial light bulb, also known as the Livermore light bulb. It was manufactured in the late 19th century, possibly around 1901, and it was done so by the Shelby Electric Company. It was installed at Fire Station No. 6 in Livermore, California, hence the name, and it has been lit up continuously for over a century. What makes the Centennial light bulb unique is its longevity. Despite being over a hundred years old, the bulb continues to emit light defying the expectations of its lifespan. The exact mechanism behind its continued operation is not fully understood, but several factors likely contribute to it. The Centennial light bulb is basically a carbon filament bulb, and that means it typically operates at a lower wattage compared to modern incandescent bulbs. This lower wattage may contribute to reduce stress on the filament, allowing it to last this long. The bulb has also been maintained very well. Most importantly though, it was made in a time when light bulb production was meticulous and quality standards were very high. The attention to detail in the build absolutely contributes to its durability. 
Next up is the Hubble Space Telescope. And although this one was not built 100 years ago, it has persevered in the face of the most challenging of environments, space. The Hubble Space Telescope launched into orbit aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery in April of 1990 and has become one of the most iconic and influential scientific instruments in history. Despite being well past its originally planned operational lifespan, it continues to operate and deliver groundbreaking discoveries about our universe. One of the key reasons why it remains in orbit and operational is because it was designed with serviceability in mind. Unlike many satellites and space probes, Hubble was specifically built to be serviced and upgraded by astronauts. Over the years, it has undergone multiple servicing missions, during which astronauts aboard space shuttles conducted repairs, replaced outdated components, and installed new instruments to keep the telescope functioning at its best. These servicing missions, which happen every few years, have allowed it to overcome various technical challenges and extend its operational life far beyond the initial expectations. Astronauts have performed complex repairs. They have replaced gyroscopes. They've installed new and updated cameras and spectrographs. They've upgraded the computers on it. And these upgrades and repairs have ensured that Hubble remains a state-of-the-art observatory capable of conducting the cutting-edge scientific research that it does. It also sits in the low orbit of the Earth, which means that it experiences atmospheric drag. And that means that it doesn't need that much fuel for orbit maintenance. And while it has gone through its fair share of challenges over the years, including failed components and degraded instruments, and even temporary shutdowns, the dedication of NASA's team of engineers and astronomers, coupled with the remarkable capabilities of the Space Shuttle fleet, have kept the telescope operational and productive. Now before I end this video, here's a couple real-life examples of items and innovations and things that really have stood the test of time. The Magic Chef 1000 series stove. My beautiful 100-year-old Zinger Zimanko sewing machine. It is operated by a foot pedal and it requires no electricity. So, they don't build them like they used to, but they also don't build them as many as they used to. And maybe that's the trade-off. Older products were built with a focus on durability and craftsmanship. People took pride in their work. They had this vision that the products that they built would outlast them. And nowadays, the focus is on the bottom line. It's trying to get the cheapest components together and offering something with as much margin as they can. And while we can sit and debate about planned obsolescence, our reality is the life cycle of things we buy just keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and the quality doesn't seem to be getting much better. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something, be sure to leave a like and a comment, and let us know what other things you'd like us to bring to you. We'll catch you in the next one.